Hmm, okay, so I guess that's it. Can you hear me correctly? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so thank you everyone to be here today, and I'm very happy uh, to being able to be here to speak about one of my projects uh, from several years ago. So first, uh, quick presentation uh, about me. I'm a Python and testing fan, as you can imagine. I'm a former Mercurial reviewer, and I currently work for Comet.ml, which is doing a monitoring solution for machine learning. But it's not the subject today. And you can find me with my pseudo, uh, Lothi Aldran, almost everywhere on the, around the web. So let's start by a question. Who in this room uh, is writing unit tests? OK, so pretty much everyone. And who in this room is not writing unit tests, but executing them? OK, so that's pretty much the majority. So I have a good news. We are not alone. In fact, uh, more than 70% of the JetBrains developer ecosystem survey answer that they are at least running unit tests. And most of them are writing, then running unit tests. So a bit of background. I actually do both because I'm writing Python most of the time and sometimes JS. So of course, when I'm doing, I'm writing some code, I'm writing some tests. And when I write some tests, I run them. So with the experience, I've learned how to run all of my tests, subset of my test or a single test, check why my new test is not running, or I, I know it should fail, but it, it doesn't, so why? Uh, I know where to find the data I need to, in the output of the test runners to understand why it's failing or not. And I know how to debug a failing test efficiently, either resulting on debugger or adding some prints and knowing exactly what, what he, where it should um, appear. But this knowledge, I took it from a lot of years of actually writing tests, running tests, and debugging them. And when you first come uh, to run tests in Python, so for example with PyTest, there is the interface you can use, you can, you can have. So you have pretty much everything, but you need to know where to find them. And if you move then to JavaScript with, for example, Jest, it's a totally different uh, interface. So for, new com for beginners, it's very hard uh, to uh, being able to use both tools uh, efficiently, at least in the beginning. So that's for the language I'm the most uh, able to write, because that's what I'm using from day to day. But I'm actually also, unfortunately, the CI expert is almost all of my jobs, and I am the one guy in the office or remotely when people say, hey, my build is, for, is failing, but I don't know why. I'm, okay, send me a link. Okay, you have this broken dependency, or you have here you have a national trend failure that you are expecting true, but it's false. Let's try to debug that. Um, so I have to understand failures from random tooling that I don't know they existed in the first place. I have to find the data in the output and maybe add them because by default, I don't know, you don't have logs or you have logs but in info and not in debug, stuff like that. From time to time, I even have to run them, those tests, even either on another, another server to see if the server configuration is impacting the test or locally. And then, okay, so you, you need to install this uh, package in this way, then when this weird command with those flags, if not, that won't work. So all with an unfamiliar language, a tool, an interface. So I was um, unhappy about this situation, and so I decided that we, not, we need some common tooling. Uh, we are engineers, we love uh, to write tooling, so let's write a tool that can bring all of this information into a single interface. So what do we want in an interface? Uh, so my Christmas list. Yours can be different, but I think uh, most of them will be there. So first color, because when you are writing thousands and thousands of lines, colors definitely helps. Progress bar, of course. We're launching only failing tests, 
because if you have a build that takes three hours, you don't want to, take, to add another three hours to your debugging session just when you add a print. Launch specific test. You might know exactly which test you want. It's either a failing one or one that should be failing, but you, you know it should be failing, but it's not. And finally, a web interface. So what I did with this Christmas list is I turned it into an interface. Let's meet Balto. So Balto uh, is a language independent test orchestrator. Uh, Balto check all of the wish list. It has colors, progress bar, we launching failing test only, launching specific test, and if you don't trust me, I will show you with a live demo. Wish me luck. Okay, um, so here is Balto. Can, can you see correctly? Okay, so you can uh, collect all of the tests, which will uh, ask the, uh, the endowed uh, test runner to give you all the, all the tests you have in your test suite. You can select a single test which will give you some very basic information because you didn't run everything yet. So let's uh, try to run this one specifically. <coughs> so here I get uh, some new data. So I know that the test is passing, which is good. Uh, I get some additional tooling. And if I launch everything now, let's launch those two files at the beginning. We can see that we get some failure with some uh, trust back. And now we can launch everything. And you can see that you have, it's actually not a good idea to have, uh, not mirroring my screen, but uh, you have uh, like STD out, you have STDR somewhere, you have logs, you have everything I need when I debug, um, when I debug uh, test suite. So, okay, but that's not uh, where I'm here. Uh, let's go back here, okay. So Balto, Balto, what is doing under the hood to get all of your data? Balto is launching the process, okay. But what is the big secret of Balto? It's reading the sub-process STD out. That's it. But they still need one little piece. Uh, the plugin, which is running in Test Runner, uh, the web server and the UI need to speak the same language. Uh, so what are the possible language to talk with each other? Because you might have, uh, here is uh, both Python, uh, the example it was in uh, with PyTest and the interface is in JavaScript. So there's already some couple of uh, output formats. So you might know some of all of them. You have GUnit, TAP, MOSLog, and SUBUnit. So GUnit very quickly is it's based on XML. It's uh, well known and used in the Java community. It's one big XML file at the end of your build. Its format is tied to GUnit. There's no independent uh, definition of it. And it's non-streamable. As it's one big file at the end, you need to uh, wait for the end of the build before being able to consume it, of course. You have also TAP. TAP, which is mo mostly famous in the Perl community. In the Perl community. Um, it's simple, but hard to extend. I uh, didn't put an example here, but you can uh, take a quick um, a look online. Its format is also tied to the TAP Perl implementation. There's no independent uh, definition of it. And it needs then an independent parser in both Python and JS. So it was not good. Uh, I, I mean that uh, you don't have, uh, the format is deeply tied to the default implementation. Uh, there is no, uh, if you want to discuss the top format, you need to create issue on the top Perl implementation. Uh, for top? 
OK, oh, I didn't know. So OK, I will update the slide then. OK. <laughs> yeah. OK, so the question was, uh, what is a non-independent definition? And uh, you, you get the answer. Um, so, sorry. OK, hopefully I will offer another solution for that. Uh, so the question, the um, comment was, uh, there's already s several producers and consumers in several languages. So uh, as a starting point, uh, he will start with that. So there's also Moslog, which is uh, used internally at Mozilla. And one particular uh, design choice was that you, uh, you have one message at the beginning of uh, an execution of a test and one message at the end, which means that readers need to keep some kind of uh, state. And I decided that one test equal one message is easier to, to consume. The last one is subunit, uh, which is actually the closest to design to what I, I have designed. Uh, it's a binary format. Uh, ex in, um, while the other ones are uh, text-based, an effort has been made to try uh, merging actually Subunit and Alitf, which I will present just after. And the biggest uh, issue was that Subunit doesn't have an input format. So what was, again, my Christmas list? Um, so my Christmas list was a format which is easy to write and easy to read, uh, which is streamable because uh, here, uh, with Balto, it's a desktop application, so you get uh, all the data in real time from a WebSocket connection, but you can have also on the CI, and as soon as you get a failing test, you can mark the CI build as well without needing to wait for the full build to be finished. And finally, a format defined outside of an implementation. Code uh, dies with age, while format defined independently can continue to evolve and get uh, hopefully more traction and more tooling uh, if it's not tied to a specific implementation and specific usage. So I decided a new format. So what do we need in this format? We, we need a test name, we need a test status, and we need an error message. So let's use JSON. Can you read uh, correctly? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, so there are two examples: was uh, with a pacing uh, test and one with a failing one. So there's actually a missing piece. Uh, we will want one message at the beginning, which tells us how many uh, tests we are going to have in the test suite, and one at the end for the total duration and the number of failing tests, passing tests. But we could add more data, and I actually showed you more data in the Balto demo. We can have uh, timing, log message, STDO, STDO, STDR, text and image diff. Uh, for example, if you are, you've done some uh, snapshot testing either on the front end or with some specific uh, test runner and the, on the command line, uh, snapshot testing is when you expect a full HTML page or full text, and you get something else. So you want to diff around, uh, you, you want to diff what was expected and not, and find file, line, and more. There was actually also one stuff missing. How do you launch a specific test? Uh, that's a good question because it's dependent to all different languages, different test runner, even if the same with the same languages, different test runner might have different way to run a specific test if they have one in the beginning. So we talk about output format, which is just like GUnit, MozLog, SubUnit, but we were missing something. We need also an input format. Why? Because when you want to run a specific, uh, specific test, you don't want any tool that needs to do that, having, OK, so for PyTest, the command line is this way. For uh, JEST, the command line is this way. For 
know the common rate this way, uh, you will be duplicate everything, while if you define an input format, all the tools can implement it uh, in their plugin, which is already needed for the output format. So if you have also an input format, any tool can actually use this format to talk uh, with the task runner. Uh, so there's two main cases. Uh, one is I just want to collect all the different tests in the test suite. And uh, the other one is I want to run specific files or specific node IDs. But for nodes, that's a bit hard because how do you format nodes? We have the same issue. So let's ask the different test runner to add it and let's create an ID field. So whatever test, whatever unique ID a test runner can generate, you send it back to whatever consumer, for example, Balto, and we can send it back to say, hey, this specific test, I want to run only it, so give it to you. I don't know anything about how it was formatted, created, does it include the test, uh, hash, whatever, I don't care, just run it again. So if we take a full example, uh, there is a valid uh, LTF output with both the name, the unique ID, uh, which is, again, obscure for Balto, uh, the outcome, and uh, the error. So that's the format i trying to uh, define. Uh, it's called ATF for Language Independent Test Format. It's defined in, in its, its uh, sorry, is in its repository, independent, uh, which lists both producer and consumer. Uh, so that means we can have discussion and effort independently from any implementation. Uh, each message that I gave an example is defined in, in its own with JSON schema uh, because it's quite uh, easy to actually say what is required, what are the kind of uh, type that you are expecting. One thing that uh, was I think very, very important is that you have uh, in this repository uh, helpers and tools which, which can help you both uh, validate uh, streams that you are creating or input streams. So uh, when you are developing a plugin, for example, a test runner in Rust, you don't have to, uh, you don't need a consumer to tell you, okay, it's, it's valid. You have an independent format which is independent test suite, which tell you, okay, this is valid, any consumer should accept it and, and uh, understand it. Uh, might be some edge cases in consumers, but at least the stream is valid. So what is the missing data? Uh, it's currently working for me. I'm, I'm using uh, Balto uh, with Python uh, in my day-to-day -day job. And so the two main things I see right now is a version number because hopefully it will evolve and binary data. As it's based on JSON, uh, binary is kind of hard to send if you, are, when you want to send uh, images for diffing or any output which might, which might not be valid Unicode, you have an issue. So that's, I know what is missing. But it works for me. Uh, it works for the test runner I'm using. I'm trying to create um, a plugin for Jest in JavaScript, but I realized that in Jest, the logs are not grouped per test. They are for the whole test file. So you need uh, to dispatch, you, have, uh, you don't have lines, uh, for example, for specific tests. So there's some limitation. So I'm trying to get more languages uh, to support it, to see what kind of assumption I made uh, in the language itself uh, of what the test runner have and can send me. And actually, uh, some test runner cannot give me lots. Like, I expected to get a line and a file from every test, but apparently that's not the case. Uh, so I'm looking specifically for those languages, uh, but uh, if you want uh, to have uh, editor support for your own test runner in other languages. Uh, I will be very happy to have it also, and uh, more importantly, get your feedback on the format itself uh, to being able to support everything. One thing which is also 
on the to-do list is currently I'm launching sub processes and running a CD out, but it's a new stream. So I could also run, I could also um, load the stream from an, from an SSH connection or from a Docker container remotely. Uh, I had it working in the past. I have a bug right now that I need to fix, but it's working. Uh, it's written in Python. Uh, so thanks to Python new capabilities in Python 3, uh, it's in synchronous. So that also means that if you have a project with a backend and a frontend written in two different languages, which is a good possibility, you could actually run both of your tests in a single tool in parallel. So that would be awesome. I don't have the case myself. Uh, I'm doing only Python, uh, but that's definitely possible. So the, the architecture, just for reminder, is Balto is speaking of only about IDTF compatible uh, <coughs> compatible uh, plugin or processes. If any of the t uh, test runner will implement IDTF directly, uh, that will mean there's no need for plugin. But uh, until it's the case, uh, a plugin will will do and might actually be helpful for getting all the STD out, STDR, and be sure that if the test runner is failing, we get something to catch it and send something back uh, to Balt. So in conclusion, uh, ATF is a new protocol because I think it's input and output. Uh, and uh, similar to HTTP or uh, LSP, if you know about it. Um, so LSP is a language server protocol. It's a new protocol pushed by Microsoft, so your IDE could talk to any LSP compatible servers. So you have one LSP server for Python, which can be used from Emacs, no, uh, maybe not Nano, uh, VS Code, Sublime Text. Uh, so it's like, exactly like LETF. It's cutting down the compatibility matrix to one format. So everything I'm talking uh, LSP or LETF will be able to talk to each other. So I hope that it will be a foundation that could be used for building tomorrow tools around testing. And for example, if you want a curse tool to run your test, you can. And if it's speaking LETF, it will be compatible with any LETF test runner. And if you want uh, a detailed HTML report about your test timing, you also can. And again, if it's speaking LETF, it will be compatible with all LETF test runners. So uh, if you want to test Balto, uh, the instructions are online. You need to install uh, PPX because uh, packaging in Python is uh, up for now. Uh, uh, I hope in the future I will get a better solution to avoid installing something else. But then once you have Balto on your system, you install uh, the LTF plugin for your test runner, and then you can enjoy. So how, how can you help? Uh, any feedback about LETF is a good feedback. Uh, it's young, uh, so nothing is written in stone yet. You can create new LTF producer, any plugin uh, for whatever test tool uh, you are using or designing. You can create new LETF consumer. I will be very happy to get both uh, ecosystem on both ends of the format and use Balto or speak about it. Of course, both Balto and LETF are open source uh, on my uh, GitHub account. And feel free to open issue or that best op uh, send pull request. And that's it for me. So I have uh, time for question. Thank you. <laughs> we have one question there. Yeah. Uh, you talked about the input format and an output format. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do that without a discovery process? Yeah. Uh, so in the input for uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so the question was uh, in my presentation, I talked both about input format and output format. So when I uh, speak about uh, the input format, uh, yeah, the first example is uh, the input that Balto is sending to the plugin, which is just collect only, and then the test runners itself has already uh, all the code to just collect the test without running them. And so it's sending back 
a specific message for test collection without the status, without uh, the timing, stuff like that. Does that answer your question? No. How do you discover the test at the first place? Uh, it's, it's, uh, so uh, the question was, how do you discover the, f the test in the first place? So uh, there is a config file for Balto at the root of the test deal. Uh, so I'm just detecting the config file, and then I'm pointing the test runner to that, to that directory. So if I understood the question correctly, is that test runner can actually have colors in the data they send back to whatever consumer. So I plan to support it in Balto. Uh, yes, sure, we need to find a way to encode it and being able to transmit it. But yeah, definitely. Definitely. So the question was, uh, when you're doing a uh, test, for example, when you are testing against a database and you want, you might have your test working with one version of the database and not another, or different databases might have different failure. So do I plan to support that? Yes, I plan to support that in Balto. Um, for now, uh, likely with both metric definition and um, Docker Compose support. You can bring up your database automatically and snap snapshot it. Uh, but I'm not sure how it will uh, involve uh, the LETF, LETF format, uh, apart from sending the information about the environment and which uh, testing matri matrix combination you are testing. Yeah. You said that should be used for the binary format? Yeah. Uh, LITF doesn't need to be used? Yeah. Uh, so the, sorry. Yeah. So what, what are the, what Okay, so the question was, I said that subunit was a binary uh, format uh, while ATF was a text format, and uh, it was asking me what are the links. Um, the binary versus text is likely, the fact that LTF is a text format is mostly just for easiness to write and, put and read because JSON is easy to write, easy to read, you have library and everything. Uh, Subunit is more uh, designed to handle um, higher loads, and he has capabilities to uh, actually filter streams, uh, split streams, merge streams. Uh, so if we have to support binary uh, outputs, uh, for example, in LTF, we likely have to move to a binary format anyway. Uh, but for now, it's tagged because it's easier. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, how do you store the, the test results? I assume they're basically the outputs of the, the computers, but uh, I don't know if uh, Bolt is capable of that. If I close it and I load it again, then I can view the past results. Okay. okay, the question was, uh, how do I test, test uh, results? For now, I don't. Uh, Balto is only a tool for desktop. Uh, but with LTF, I hope that we can get CI system, which is our much, much uh, more smarter and will have to store data. For now, I don't. 